So we played as white here and push through the center e4, our fave move. Develop the knight and capture, keeping it nice and simple. And the knight comes across, so obviously we're going to take that off the board. So the queen is out there by itself, so we're hoping that they're going to be like a greedy munching queen or something. So we develop our knight. They bring the bishop through, so we make space for castling, all pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Castle, and smaller piece attacking a higher piece, which is the pawn attacking the queen, makes sense. And then the queen's moving to the other side of the board, it's making itself a little bit available for some potential attacks with our dark square bishop, but we have to keep that in our back pocket for now. So we make space for the dark square bishop, looking to just harass the queen a bit if it's still going to stay there and they move the knight so we bring the bishop through attacking the queen winning bit, winning a bit of tempo and they bring the bishop down attacking so we can take that off the board now the queen's got further down the board and obviously always for the b pawn going greedy munching this occasion we're saying well no let's keep you in that little box on the other side of the board away from your king so they castle to the other side of the board away from their queen so a small piece attacking their bishop can't be wrong and then we capture as you can see the gauge bars showing that they're kind of winning it's minus one it's really kind of neither here nor there really once it's past the two mark obviously then we have to pay some type of attention and they start moving the knight so a small piece attacking the queen queen goes back and now we can develop our queen. Just basically making space, either if we were looking to maybe touch on a little bit to attack the queen, maybe come here even and attack the queen, or maybe just to get a nice position towards their knight in front of the king. So there's options. So again, kind of overworking their queen. What are they, tra what are they planning here? Are they planning a two on one on the pawn? You know, getting one of the rooks across here. I think that's potentially what they were looking at. So we bring our rook up, potentially looking to come here to defend the pawn, but it's taking itself away from the sight of the queen as well, just in case our rook is coming across somehow and doing something funky, not whilst the knight is there, obviously. So they do come and double up on the pawn. So we bring our f rook supporting we do have the bishop that can drop back as well and defend we do have the rook that can come and defend so if they're looking at doing like a trickle dose onto the pawn which it looks like they were planning to do so we moved our queen off of the line didn't want it to be the front runner in the exchanges 
So as we mentioned, we could potentially attack the queen coming this side here earlier on because we've got the support from the pawn. And they do actually capture, so we capture. So it's still showing advantages for black uh, for the most part of this game. So at minus 0 0.2, again, neither here nor there with that really. So they double up. So we can push the pawn now because it's got the support of the e pawn. So that's pretty nice. But as you can see, the gauge bar has not moved for any kind of advantage for us during the game. But I'm feeling fairly comfortable. Because what has the opponent got to challenge us with? I feel fairly good that we're managing these set the centre squares with the rook, with the pawn. Bishop doesn't look too bad, although it is biting on granite here at this moment in time. We do have space to get the rook up here if we were going to be doing that type of thing. So he's making space for his king. So we now can look to double up the rooks. So we double the rooks up. At this point in time, it's flicking from draw to minus 0 0.1. Again, neither here nor there. So we're playing it nice and safe. It's, um, it's comfortable. So it's all about really who does the overextending or who can challenge the pawn breaks and who is managing the pawn breaks and who has got the advantage in the pawn breaks. It's the way that it's looking at the minute. So we're looking to challenge the knight, see if we can get the knight out of the way. And they push down, so we push onto the knight. So the knight's gone backwards and now we can just look to condense the corner. So it's kind of making the knight do stuff it doesn't really want to do. So it's going to have to swing around to get back into the game. So my rook's going to have to come here, give it space, that type of thing. So at least in the back of my head, I'm thinking, hmm, this is a positive for us. I know the computer's showing it's a draw, but it feels more positive for us. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, how can I make my white square bishop a little bit more active at this moment? So as we mentioned, the knight's jumped backwards. I mean, once the knight's going backwards, it's almost almost a disadvantage. But this rook's going to have to make space for it if it's going to get active across here. So I'm feeling that we're winning a little bit of tempi, but what can we do in order to increase our benefit? Is it a pawn move just to manage the center a little bit more? So we push the e pawn up just to manage a little bit more of the center just in case they're planning to come down here type situation also it's managing any potential forward movements with our d pawn so they actually push down and i'm feeling quite comfortable with that maneuver because we can push up onto their pawn so at this point i'm thinking this is like the pawn break management type thing that we talked about earlier where the one who potentially is going to manage those pawn breaks is probably going to win out slightly. So they do actually capture, which I was kind of surprised at. It is like a five minute game, but the opponent, we're on three minutes 45, I'm on three minutes. And the opponent's on 345, I'm on 354. So it's still plenty of time to think of appropriate moves. So in the eyes of the game, You'd think, well, if you're trading off the rooks, it's going to be a draw. But I'm looking at the pawn structures after all of these captures are taken. And I'm thinking, at this moment in time, I'm thinking, well, we've got a pass pawn here. If we can get our king up and support it, maybe we can start working our pieces together, put more pressure onto the opponent. Hopefully they make a mistake, especially across here, looking to try and blast through on this side. Whereas we can try and get an advantage over on the other side of the board computer showing that it's a draw didn't feel like a draw to me it felt like if i work appropriately get the king in the game then we're going to be okay so as we mentioned they're going to try and destruct this area here to get a bit of an advantage so we captured the pawn and now we can start moving our king up so computer showing it's a draw i'm not believing it's a draw i'm believing that this type of position would be a bit advantageous for us so we push the pawns up nice and steady away and they push their pawn down and we capture so at this point in time it does feel a little bit stronger for us yes they've got two well two pawns against one here but the move order of things i don't think is going to allow them to get the pawns down in time 
because our king is going to be managing this square. So we move the king up and then bring the bishop across. Now at this point um did have a little bit of a panic thinking, hmm. But then I thought, well no, it's not going to be fast enough either way. You know, if the knight comes across here and gets this pawn, his knight's blocking this pawn, so he's gonna to have to move again. So our king can take this pawn, win a tempo, and then this pawn is going to be going up. But it does look scary when they've got two pawns against one pawn. So I decided to bring the bishop supporting our e pawn. So they do bring their knight across, but they're probably two moves behind. Yeah, as you can see, pushing the pawns down. There's not much that the opponent can do against this particular pawn manoeuvre. The king can't do anything because our king is blocking the way. And we also do have a pass pawn on the D, so it's blocking that pawn. And this is all pretty straightforward stuff really coming towards here with the queen. Queen can go really anywhere and just cause a lot of havoc and trouble. And the bishop did a nice job. Didn't have much to do. It did did its job in the end game in terms of defending. Other than that, it didn't really have a right but to do. Interesting game.